And last but not least, sticking with that trend of trendy baits, we're gonna go way back with a blast from the past. And we're gonna talk about metal, and we're gonna talk about hair. Metal comes in several different varieties. In this case right here, you just have yourself a flutter spoon. Uh, up north, we use stuff like this a lot for trolling for northerns and stuff like that. But this is an awesome bait out on the ledges. It mim mimics a dying shad. Blade baits, another good one. You used to always think this was a cold weather thing. We're gonna get into that more, but blade baits have definitely evolved a lot and are getting really, really trendy. When we're talking about hair, what about the preacher jig? You know, this is the big hair jig. I believe they call it a preacher jig. That's where that got its name from. A lot of people in the South where it originated along the Tennessee River, fishing those big impoundments like Kentucky Lake, Chickamauga, Gunnersville. Caught a preacher jig because of the way it stands. When it's like this, it looks like a preacher standing at the altar, but it's actually a hair. People call it buck hair, buck hair jigs. Uh, they make it out of a lot of different type of stuff, but this is your general, just your general look. All the way down to little tiny little marabou jigs that I use for smallmouth upon Lake Malak. So again, let's get back in the boat and let's wrap this thing up and let's bring together our oldest technique that's definitely our trendiest. All right, here we are, we're back in the boat and I promise you all this is the last time I'm getting back in this boat before I'm actually going fishing. But we gotta get done what we gotta get done and we are talking about old school, real old school becoming kind of the newest trendier things and that is dealing with metal, and hair, old school stuff. Way before we had, you know, plastic molding, soft plastics, all the stuff that we're using today to replicate those baits. So to kick it off, let's get right into the hair jigs. Hair jigs are used to mimic that of shad, bluegills, all the way down to little, little tiny ones like this, uh, marabou that are meant to mimic, you know, if it's green, little tiny crawdads early in the year for smallmouth or mayfly hatch, another real big one that people don't look at a lot. Uh, before we get going too far into this slide, I do want to kind of let everyone know back, back here that it's currently April and I'm in Tennessee. We go back home here in May and I get all my gear for summertime, summertime fishing and definitely smallmouth fishing. I don't have a lot of it here with me, but I still wanted to go over a lot of this with you because it is real trendy and from Minnesota to, to Texas they are catching bait they're catching fish on hair and on metal so I just want to kind of still give a breakdown but you got to kind of bear with me and this is one that I'm sheepish to show you actually all of my marabou jigs are sitting at home uh, at Lake Mille Lacs right now and I use the outcast tackle stealth fighter jig I actually here at this tournament had to go bum one off a guy that is from Wisconsin to find a hair jig just to show you guys I don't have the right setup for it. I don't have none of the stuff because it's a little bit unique. But let's start with this kind of a hair jig. This is a marabou jig. I don't know who makes this one. I think it might be a VMC. As I said, I'm an outcast tackle, fighter fly fan. Uh, Seth Fighter, good buddy of mine, helped make that. It has Canadian roots. I tied them for people before they were mass manufactured. It is my hair jig of choice. Uh, it's definitely that in my videos back it up that you're seeing now. But at the same time, this is the general concept of a marabou jig. So they're really, really small. And a lot of people think this gets fished on the ground. It doesn't because what we're actually trying to mimic is little crawdads moving across the bottom or even more so mayflies that are raising up from the bottom and hatching and turning into mayflies. And then coming back down and dying on top of the water where the smallmouth know that that is a real easy meal. Now what's funny about this is a tiny, tiny, little tiny bait like this. I mean, this is probably, I guess, 332nd of an ounce, no more than an eighth probably even lighter it feels, that this little tiny thing moved in the water column, not fished on the bottom, moved across the water column. And when you can imagine all the water on this thing, it just shrinks it up tiny. Those smallmouth have such good vision that they can take this thing down. They can actually, they learn to look for it. And it's not small fish. Small smallmouth know that the crawdads and the perch are their main source. So they're down there rooting around the rocks and around the weed edges, sand breaks, stuff like that, looking for that kind of bait. The four, five, six pound smallmouth know how to get an easy meal. That's how they got that big. And they know when mayfly season's around and anytime you got a crawdad hatch, you're gonna have very vulnerable bait that's very high in protein and they don't have to work very hard to get it. So they're looking up and they're looking for them. Big time technique in the spring. One thing about hair that you need to consider is that hair is old school and has never gone away because of its attributes, what it can do in the water. Soft plastic and stuff can mimic stuff better most times a year. Hard plastic crankbaits, spinnerbaits, jigs like we talked to, all the other stuff that we talked about already. But there's something about hair uh, when things are really tough 
that natural still wins, and that's the case here. So early in the year when you have your coldest water temps, that's when this is gonna start to shine. Then through the spawn, as fish are starting to move up shallow onto the flats, this is still gonna be their deal. One, because I can't put a bait on the rocks. In Northern Minnesota and all through the North, once the ice goes off, and the warmth starts, the sun starts to come around, starts to warm up, we get like a mold across the top of our rocks. I can't even throw a Ned rig on it, I'll bring back, you know, a bunch of slime on it. So I have to keep things just off the surface. But like I said with the swim bait, I have to match a cadence to what all the other bait fish and all the other fish in that environment are living on. If it's cold water, they're not gonna move that fast. So I need a bait that I can fish in just a couple feet of water can't hit the rocks, but still move slow enough. So I can go with those little tiny paddle tails that way I talked about, or my other choice would be hair. Nice thing I like about this, similar to the paddle tail, when they bite it, you got it. Let's talk about what we're throwing this on. This is what we do. Now this is a jig technically, but unlike those other jigs that all need a jig trailer or a chunk to, to be good, this one doesn't. I do sometimes put a small little end of a sink, I'm talking like an inch, and I'll slide it up the hook keeper. And the, the one that I actually use, the fighter fly, has a keeper meant for that. What does that do? Just a tiny little bottom piece of sinker. sinker. All it does is it gives the skirt or the, the hair a little bit more a little bit more kick to it, but more importantly, it adds just a little bit more weight because this thing's tiny. So casting, it's a big, big deal. So that's when we're gonna get into the tack on what we're using. I don't have the stuff here. We're gonna put some photos in and stuff of what my actual setup is, but I use a G Loomis NRX 901 spinning rod. That is seven foot, six inches, medium light. That is a big critical key. Why do I need that outfit, medium light? I don't think I use it for anything else, but maybe a spy bait. But I do use it for this and it's the best thing for it. The longer rod and the medium light action allows me to throw this thing a long ways. The key is, you're gonna have super clean water this time of year, spring up north, they can see, that's why this is good. I wouldn't throw this in muddy water, so they're not gonna need, they're not gonna see it. That's when a spinner bait or something with blades, a loud lip, a trap, a lipless crankbait, something loud can get to them. They're not gonna see this. This is clear water type of stuff. So I, the flip side of that is, can't let them get too close to the boat because they're notorious for falling behind it before they eat it. Super long cast, mimicking that of a crawdad or again, a mayfly coming up. They're looking up, they're gonna eat stuff that looks like this. So the seven six medium light is not only crucial for casting such small baits, but also keeping them hooked. You know, once they have it, I swear my hookup ratio is like, if, if I can get past, if they don't just nip it and miss it, if they eat it and I, and it loads up, I got that fish. 99% of the time that fish is coming into the boat uh, every single time. Uh, it's just, it's a good hookup, hookup ratio and that medium light seven and a half foot is gonna really help in keeping that bait landed, uh, keeping that fish landed and keeping them on the bait. So that's the marabou. You know, again, I can't use this, you know, much deeper than 10, 12 feet. You know, I'm keeping in the middle of water comma. Fish can see it no problem because again, my, my water level's clear, but they need to be looking up. It's gonna be very hard to fish out past 15 feet. So it's general shallow, but this thing really shines, you know, six, seven foot or under, all the way up to inches of water is where this bait is gonna shine. Springtime of the year, again, you're matching those smaller forages, you're matching that mayfly hatch. Once summer starts to roll around, those fish start to move deeper, we start to get our algae blooms, the water starts to get a little deeper, the forage is starting to get a little bigger, this bite is gonna to start to end. When this bite ends, this one starts to pick up. Now at the same time, we're not talking about smallmouth anymore. Smallmouth gonna have a tough time. You know, they're belly grabbers. They like small stuff. They let rather eat, I've said this before in our seminars, I'll say it again. Uh, they'd rather eat a hundred little tiny minnows a day, little flies like that to get to be five pounds. Well, a large mouth's the opposite. It wants to eat one big gizzard shad or one big bluegill a day and it'll get to five pounds. So when that starts to die off, now I'm back on my ledges looking for back in my deeper water, ledges along the Tennessee River, big points down on Lake Fork and Rayburn, or, or, or even Lake Minnetonka weed lines with rock piles and stuff on them. This is when this thing starts to really take hold, summertime fishing. 
hair been along a long time as i said they called this a preacher jig back in the day the last few years it's really come back into play as a staple there's a lot of different variations of this out there uh, this one right here this is the outcast tackle chicken jig chicken hackle feathers buck hair and in this case some synthetic that's a newer trend you know it was made back in the day with the chicken feathers and the buck hair now we're starting to see some of these new fibers and stuff coming out that really give this bait a lot of action the key with this bait and the rest of them we're going to talk about the marabou jig i don't really ever want to touch the bottom all the rest of them need to touch the bottom they're resembling a dying bait fish that's exactly what they're gonna they're gonna do so i can throw this out i can reel it you'll get some bites that way the same thing i'm going to do with the marabou just a nice light straight reel and the fish just comes up behind it you know mayflies don't try to get away from smallmouth Okay, they don't try to do that. Shad and stuff does. So again, nice straight presentation with that. When it comes to these types of baits, I need to really make them come alive. Uh, so this one right here, this is this is a five eighths ounce, maybe a three quarter. Um, they come in half, five eighths, three quarter ounce. A lot of different companies are making them. This one's Outcast Tackles. Again, I, I really like it. It's the company I'm with. Uh, it's using my original golden head design, the one that I'm we discussed in the paddle tail stuff as the head, but the line ties forward. It's that same swim bait hook that we were talking about for fishing deeper water, same stout hook. Setup's gonna be important. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. The old school way of doing it, you know, Alabama, Tennessee, and I'm always picking those, those guys' brains on how they're throwing these baits because really they're the originators of it. Where that marabou jig's more of a Canadian Northern thing, smallmouth, this is for catching those big largies off those ledges. Uh, a lot of them tell me, you know, 12 pound test on a medium heavy seven foot rod is what they used. I guess that, that's old school. I can't, I don't do that much it doesn't work for me but again a lot of those guys will kick my butt in ledge tournaments doing it the way they do it but i found most success is either two ways is either straight fluorocarbon or braid to fluorocarbon i prefer braid to fluorocarbon when i do it um, but I, I prefer we've talked about this I, I it's just something that i prefer a lot more everyone coming in the store not necessarily going to be the case so straight fluorocarbon definitely works so in this case i'm using straight 15 pound seeger and visex fluorocarbon no real shocker there and visex is my flavor seeger is my deal that, that's my fluorocarbon that i can count on and, and does a great job with casting i do flip it up a little bit if i'm flipping or something I might use something else but for the most time seeger and visex is definitely what i'm going to use Use. My rod of choice is a seven foot seven inch Shimano X Pride heavy action rod. There, there's a, a few different rods that you can use. The seven heavy, heaven this heavy. This is the same one I was talking about with the swim bait rods. A lot of similarities here. At the same time, I'm using a fast gear ratio reel. It's an XG Shimano Corrado uh, XG. You can cast it a really long way. But at the same time, now I need to pick up the line quick because how you're actually going to fish this jig is you cock back, you throw it as it gets out there you let it fall to the bottom you're going to reel stop let it fall back to the bottom reel pick it back up let it fall back it's a pendulum up and down like a, an injured bait fish that's fleeing that's trying to get away and a lot of times you're going to go to pick it up you're going to drop it you're going to pick it back up again and your rod's going to load and the fish is going to have it you're never going to feel the bite hence one reason why i personally like to use braid to a, like a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader because when i don't feel that bite but then i pick back up on it i have no stretch i have nothing with the braid i can just hit them but again that's not necessarily mainstream just yet a lot of guys are still using uh straight fluorocarbon straight fluorocarbon line so picking up the line is a big deal and basically you're fishing it like a jig except you're not dragging it. you're throwing it out there and you're moving it you're making it come up fall back down up fall back down you get the bite on the fall so that's how you that's how you're going to do the preacher jig or what they just call buck hair jig a lot of people just call the hair us at outcast call it the chicken uh, that's the chicken jig from the once we get away from the feathers let's get back into that other old school it's been here forever metal and metal comes in so many different ways you have your standard blade baits like this that have been around for just a really long time and all the way up to our new age blade baits Again, sometimes bigger can be better when you're matching, depends where you're going. Lake Mille Lacs, you know, fall time of the year, it's almost winter time, Lake Mille Lacs, and they're eating little tiny tulipies and little, little perch and stuff like that, and they're really feeding up. I'm matching the hatch. I'm sitting down on Lake Fork, and they're eating big gizzard shad. That matches the hatch. 
This right here is three eighths ounce. This right here is four ounces. Uh, different, but they still both do the same thing. Same general idea, and I use the big one for a demonstration. Same thing with the hair jig, except you're gonna use your rod a lot of the time. So I'm gonna cast it out there, let it fall all the way to the bottom. With this one, it's gonna happen quick. And I'm gonna lift the bait up, it'll go work like this it works its way up you'll feel heavy vibration and then you're going to drop it back down they're going to bite it on the drop almost every single time what this bait does is it one it mimics their bait fish but two it does not give a fish much of a chance to think about eating it so it's actually even though it's big it goes against everything else i've told you with pressured fish sizing down all that you can go the other way you can go bigger you can take a big spoon like this which is coming up next again matching the bigger gizzard shad that are out there and then presenting it to a, in a way you don't want to let the fish get a good look at that that don't look right but if it drops in its face so fast it doesn't really have a choice it doesn't have hands to swat it away it has a mouth it's going to open it up and it's going to eat it and they're just going to get a bunch of treble hooks so let's talk about more about the blade bait actually before we get into that let's just talk about the spoons because they're all fished the same you have numerous different kinds of spoons here in all kinds of size kind of started with one of these right here a little hammered spoon those definitely still play it's a good size they've got up to these big mag spoons to match the gizzard shad all the way down to little tiny spoons like this to match a little pin minnows. Just depends on what the forage is. That's my job every time I get to a lake is to figure out what these fish are eating and then go after them that way. What are they eating? If this is what they want, then this is what I'm gonna give them. If this is what they're going after, then this is what I'm gonna get them. But obviously, setups are gonna be totally different. For this, I need a big extra heavy rod. Like uh, the, the one I generally use, which again, I don't have a lot of the stuff with me, I'll re back in Minnesota and get all my stuff for the summer but I really like the G Loomis NRX umbrella rig rod actually it's like seven seven roughly something like that uh, extra heavy it's, it's a pool cue man it's good for the Alabama rig it throws it's got excellent feel to it but it can handle this and it ain't so much again like the big swim baits it ain't so much uh the fish that I'm trying to catch with it but so much as having to be able to huck a bait I need a rod that's going to load this up so this looking strictly like the swim baits I'm looking seven and a half foot to eight foot heavy to extra heavy getting down down to something like this right here we're talking you know seven foot medium heavy you know something like this it ain't no more than an ounce it's probably a half ounce three quarter maybe three quarter ounce something like that seven seven foot medium heavy bait casting rod this we're gonna have to go more this way to spinning tackle because I can't throw that very good on bait casting equipment and be efficient. So here's another blade bait right here. Very, the same exact thing as this, just smaller. This is one that I would use up on Mille Lacs. And actually you can use this all around the country. I mean, they'll still eat small ones. It's just more so I'm not gonna bring a giant bait to Minnesota necessarily, even though they will eat it. They definitely will eat it at times. So that's not always the best way to look. Uh, but this setup right here is another blade bait. This is the Mega Bass one. My setup for this is, is a spinning rod and I'm using the same exact spinning rod we've been using for all of these. If you can't tell here, if someone comes in the store, they're looking for a good spinning rod for bass fishing. I'd say a seven foot medium action would be ideal for almost everything you can start to get real specific and all that trust me i do you know like the 901 for throwing the hair jig that's seven six medium lights the only thing i use it for though but the seven foot medium action i can use across the board for absolutely everything it's also a good drop shot rod but again doing the exact same thing casting this out there using my rod to lift it up and then drop it back down pick up the slack drop it back down pick up the slack you'll feel the vibration you set it back down you go to pick it up and all of a sudden it just you feel your drag start to pull up because the fish bit it uh, great way to get bit metal and hair used to be considered cold weather techniques once modern day tackle started to really take hold uh, injection molding stuff like that once that took hold that kind of took the back seat and now all of a sudden is becoming major trendy major mainstream as it comes back up catch bass of all varieties we catch plenty of walleyes on all this kind of stuff and it's just how you're going to fish it so really the hair jig whether it, whether you're using metal or you're using the big hair jig you still have to make this thing look like a wounded fish for that you're going to be using a heavier action rod 
to make big casts in a fast gear ratio. I'm using the rod to impart the action and the fast speed gear ratio reel to catch up on the bite once I got them and get that hook into them and get that rod bowed back down and get that fish in the boat.